Coming up on Marae, a year on, we fondly remember the passing of Sir Howard Morrison. Land is mine. God gave this land to me. There are some New Zealanders who, from the moment they speak or sing, are instantly recognisable. Sir Howard Morrison was one of those. And what is more, he was a living expression of New Zealand identity. Through his music, Sir Howard forged a cross-cultural bridge between Māori and Pākehā and others. Howard Morrison was outstanding in his musical entrepreneurship and he never lost his enthusiasm or his strong belief. E kai waiata nui nui, pa Howard. Haere, haere, haere atura. He kōrero i tua atui tērā, hei whakau tuwhera i a tātou kōrero i tēnei ata. E te iwi tēnā koutou katoa. Nei rā mātou o marae e whakau nui nei e poroporo aki nei te manu rōreka, kua wahangu. Kia ora and good morning. I'm Shane Taurima and welcome to Haere Rā, Farewell Sir Howard Morrison, a special marae live broadcast. He lived his life through music and did everything he could to make the world live through music with him. His people are Ngāti Pūkāki, a hapū of Ngāti Whakaue, and iwi of Te Arawawaka. Now, while Sir Howard's pride in his people was always strong, it was in a 2002 documentary that his love for his parents and siblings shone through. This is the family house. Mum and Dad, four girls, my brother Laurie and myself. In the background, always the solidarity of the family is my mum. And I think in the later years, it was payback time richly deserved for mum, taking her around on tour. She was widowed at 42 years of age. As a mother, the best there was. As a person who was admired, absolutely. As an inspiration, and as a lecturer, <laughs> missed her terribly. Oh, 
I spent a couple of memorable years with my dad in the period of time when I was really wanted to get close to him as a mate because I felt I was growing up at 18. And, um, of course, my dad played with George Napier. Was he a good footballer? He was brilliant. Was I a good footballer? On reflection, well, about two yards too slow. But um, I, I know I had good hands. I could catch the ball. And I remember playing in Hawke's Bay and Dad coming back and saying to me, Son, good game you played, but I think one of these days you'll be a better singer. when a 20-something-year-old Howard Morrison, along with members of the famed Howard Morrison Quartet, recorded the Spanish-inspired Granada on film. Now, we've got it here for you, so sit back and watch this special moment in New Zealand film history. Granada, I'm falling under your spell And if you would speak what a fascinating tale you would tell Of an age the world has long forgotten Of an age that weaves a silent magic in Granada Remember the splendor that once was Granada. It still can be found in the hills all around as I wander along, entranced by the beauty before me, entranced by a land full of sunshine and a song. And when day is done and the sun starts to set in Granada, I envy the flush of the snow clad Sierra Nevada. But for soon it will welcome the stars while a million guitars. 
guitars, play soft cabonera, and the moonlit Granada will live again the glories of yesterday. Jerry Medito and of course Sahad Morrison bringing a little Spanish sun into 1960 New Zealand. I'm joined now by some old friends of Sir Howard's who lived through those times. Entertainment promoter Russell Clark and entertainers Eddie Lowe and Ray Wolfe are here with me in Auckland. Kia ora and welcome. Kia ora. Thank you. Kia ora. While in Dunedin is veteran broadcaster Neil Collins who recorded the last interview with Sir Howard less than a week ago. Kia ora Neil. Kia ora Shane. Neil, let's begin, with you. Eddie. let's begin with you, Neil. What was he like last week? What was the interview like? Well, it was a lovely chat uh, with an old friend. Before I say anything, could I first of all offer my condolences to Lady Morrison and to the wider family, the Farnow, at this very sad time. And yes, going back to that interview, uh, what did he sound like? Well, he sounded perhaps a little tired and a little chesty. I put that down at the time to the fact that he'd been travelling and he'd had uh, quite a, uh, you know, a, a strenuous time getting to that point. But he was also happy and we shared a lot of laughs, a lot of chuckles along the way. We relived a few of the uh, good times in the past and the serious things that he had done in his career as well. So we had a, we had a lovely chat and I'm so pleased we did it. Russell Clark, you've been a friend of Sir Howard's for the past 40 years or so. How will you remember him? Well, I remember him, Shane, as a, uh, a wonderful entertainer, of course, first of all. A wonderful man with a wonderful sense of humour. Uh, Neil and I go back uh, a long, long way uh, with Howard, and we've had some wonderful adventures together. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, Howard was the greatest entertainer that uh, New Zealand has ever produced. I'm privileged to be sitting here with two other wonderful entertainers, Eddie Lowe and Ray Wolfe, who are old friends of mine of many years as, as well. Uh, Howard is, a, is the kind of person that we'll never see again. An entertainer that we will never in this country ever see again, in my opinion. He's an icon, and uh, it's uh, as I, sa I was saying to Neil just the other day, we were talking, uh, he was like Elvis Presley or Michael Jackson. Uh, there will never be another one that will pass this way again, the way Howard did with us. Touched our lives, that mighty voice, and uh, such a wonderful entertainer. And I had the privilege of also being a great friend of his and uh, booking him onto the uh, Royal Variety performance in which he sang for the first time How Great Thou Art, and that became his signature song and uh, I'm just so proud of the fact that I was able to be helpful in that particular situation as well too and uh, remember some wonderful things that happened with Howard. I did say with Neil um, earlier a very very um, um, touching situation happened to me recently. Uh, the day after Howard's passing uh, I was sitting having breakfast on my farm in Waiatarua. Howard loved the way I pronounced Waiatarua and um, I was looking out there and um, all of a sudden, down from the sky and sitting, sitting down onto the, on, the, uh, on the roof of the conservatory was a white heron, a katuku. And uh, it sat there and just flapped its wings, stretched its neck and looked around and uh, looked into, the, uh, into the, the room and everything. And I thought, that's unusual. We've got all sorts of wildlife up there, but uh, nothing like that had ever happened before. The other, later in the day, I'm the franchisor of Video Easy International. I went to one of our stores and uh, Howard's um, DVD was there. And I looked at it and this wonderful face of Howard was there. And up in the right-hand corner was a white heron, a katuku. And I mentioned that to Neil and uh, I'd be interested in seeing his response. We, we will get a response from Neil uh, shortly. But Ray Wolf, what was he like? What was the man like on tour? 